let us continue our discussion on international fact of mobility and now we look at migration of capital across countries or international capital movement there are two types of international capital movement the first one being foreign portfolio investment this is investment in stocks and bonds and from one country into another for example the us decides to invest in stocks and bonds in india this will be called foreign portfolio investment and the purpose of this from the perspective of source country from where the investment is coming is to maximize returns on investment and also to minimize risk by having a diversified portfolio of stocks and bonds in different currencies and <clears throat> if you invest in mutual funds you might have come across mutual funds for emerging markets so from source country this is the reason people want to make as much as possible as returns on their investment in financial instruments from the perspective of the host country this happens to bridge the gap between savings and investment and we'll talk about this in greater detail sometime later the second type of international capital movement is foreign direct investment and or fdi in short and this is just investment in factories capital goods land inventories etc and as far as fdi goes a company is considered to be foreign control if 10% or more of company stock is held by company now historically speaking <clears throat> initially till about world war 1 or till the beginning of the 20th century foreign portfolio investment was more important than foreign direct investment and most of the foreign portfolio investment came from uk or other european nations which had colonies elsewhere and they invested a lot of money to ensure that they get supply of raw materials from the us perspective when us was growing in the 19th century us received a lot of foreign portfolio investment and this money was used for railroad construction factories communications etc so then foreign portfolio investment was important beginning from world war 1 to about uh what we see is the following that foreign direct investment became relatively more important than foreign portfolio investment around the world and us became a major supplier of foreign direct investment and so if you look at the companies in the us like coca cola ford general motors and all that these companies had operated in more than one foreign country so companies like this which operate in more than one foreign country are called multinational corporations or mncs in short so starting from about the beginning of 20th century till about 1980 us became a major uh, exporter of foreign direct investment into other countries in 1980s this trend was reversed and us became a recipient of foreign direct investment coming from other countries into the us now when we say exporter or importer of foreign investment just remember every country will be exporting and importing investment but on a net basis what happens are they giving out more relative to what they are receiving that decides whether the country is a net exporter or a net importer of foreign capital and just to give you an idea about the mncs they are really really large and the un mncs or the companies located in the us the multinational corporations they were responsible for 14 trillion dollars worth of global sales and they employed about 23 million people overseas in 
And what about foreign direct investment into the U.S. in 2009? Most of the MNCs located in the U.S. were from Europe and mainly the U.K. And their total sales in the U.S. was $2.9 trillion dollars and they were responsible for employing 5.3 million American workers. So we know multinational corporations or multinational enterprises operate in different countries around the world. And what we have seen are two patterns. One is you'll find these companies opening up plants in different countries where they produce same or similar product or similar product could be called differentiated product. If this happens, it is called horizontal integration. So if you look at a company like Coca-Cola, which has bottling plants around the world, what it does is it ships its secret ingredient and the bottling and filling up of liquid is done in these different nations, an example of horizontal integration. And this has to be compared with vertical integration and here when you're talking about vertical integration only a part of production is done in one country for example if you're looking at a company like general motors which is located in the u.s for a for any vehicle they received parts from different countries for example the radiator caps that are used in gm vehicles in produced in the u.s they come from india an example of vertical integration and one thing we have observed about multinational corporation is they indulge in what is called transfer pricing and the purpose of this is to minimize their tax bill and so this is relevant for within firm sales or intra firm sales Suppose U.S. is a low tax country and India is a high tax country. So when an American company ships components to India, what it does is it will overprice them. And after they have been worked upon and now shipped back to the U.S., they are going to underprice it because the taxes on any of these products is simply based on value addition in a particular country. So what they are trying to show is the value added in India is very low and hence they pay a low amount of taxes in high tax nation which we are calling India. FTI from the perspective of source country can take place because of different reasons and there are three main reasons as to why foreign direct investment takes place. One is these FDIs could be resource seeking. If you look at the world, some of the countries are richly endowed in natural resources, the others are not. And at the same time, there are some countries which have the technology or the technical know-how to get these natural resources and work on them and and you might have guessed i'm talking about resources like iron bauxite aluminum oil and so on and another characteristic of these resource based industry is during the processing period they lose a significant amount of their weight so what fdis do is they go and invest in countries which are rich in certain resources and like I said this could be oil, iron, bauxite and so on. So a lot of US and European investment is in resource seeking uh, type FDI and so, the, so they invest a lot of money and set up plants to extract material from the earth and so on and so you find resource seeking FTIs in Africa, in earlier times, they used to be in different colonies as well, resource-seeking FTI. Another reason as to why foreign direct investment takes place in different countries is simply because 
this company wants to open up an office which is very close to the market where they are selling it so may they may start producing this product very close to the market one of the reasons for doing this is called tariff jumping and that is if tax on imports of this final product is too high in the importing nation so what this exporting nation will do is it will go and establish a plant in that importing nation so it's closer to it and it doesn't have to pay higher taxes import duties simply because they are not exporting the final product they're producing it within that market so foreign direct investment that takes place where you're trying to be closer to your customers is called market seeking foreign direct investment and in terms of cost there's another reason as to why this takes place when during the processing process uh, uh, processing you tend to add weight to the product in such a case just from transport cost alone it makes sense to be closer to the market market seeking fdi the third type of fdi is called efficiency seeking and this is foreign direct investment into countries which are able to supply raw materials or inputs at a fairly low cost for example if the workers are paid lower wages it may make sense to locate your factories there that's why we have investment by us and european and other countries into china vietnam and so on simply because the labor is cheaper and so so what they do is they produce the product there and from there say in china and then they ship it to other countries for sale so once again three types of fdi resource seeking market seeking and efficiency seeking